Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you a really quick, easy, efficient method for finding the nth term for quadratic sequences. Now, what's probably led you to this YouTube tutorial is that you have come to a sequence that has a second row of constant differences. Let's have a look at an example of this. This is a quadratic sequence. Now, we know what to do with linear sequences, don't we? We've got a constant, you know, constant difference between the terms, but sometimes you get a sequence like this. So let's say 9, 18, 31, uh, 48, 69 might be your sequence. And the difference between these terms, we've got 9, then we've got 13, then we've got 17, and then we've got 21. And so we might then investigate what the second row of differences is, which ends up being constant. Now, as soon as you realize that you've got a second row constant you know, constant second row of differences, um, then you know automatically that your nth term is going to involve n squared. Specifically, it's going to be of the form a n squared plus b n plus c. And it's our job to work out the values of a, b, and c. Now, I'm going to show you my way of doing this. And I haven't seen much evidence of this elsewhere on YouTube, um, but I really like it because it's so efficient. Um, basically, what you'll see I've just done, I've put two vertical lines. This is the special column. I'll just put SC for special column. And what I do is I label this special column. And this is just the only thing that you need to remember. C, A plus B, and 2A. Okay, now <laughs> you might think, what on earth is going on here? Right, well, what's going to happen is we're going to look at this sequence and we're going to actually look at what term would go before that first term. So in this this row, we've got four. Uh, sorry, we've got three fours, four, four, four. What would have gone before it then if we were continuing that sequence backwards? Well, it would have been another four, wouldn't it? To keep that constant four, okay, right? Our next job is to think what would have been the term before nine in that second row of differences? Well, if we know that the differences are always four, then really what we're doing is 21 minus four is 17, 17 minus four is 13, 13 minus four is nine, and 9 minus 4, 4 less than 9 gives us 5. Okay, so I found the preceding term um, to 9 here, the second row of differences. Okay, now I'm going to do a similar thing again, like a subtraction sort of method to find out what would go on this top, on this top number up here. Okay, and then we'll deal with this bit. So 69 minus 21 is 48, 48 minus 17 is 31, 31 minus 13 is 18, 18 minus 9 is 9. The, the difference before that, which is 4 less than 9, is 5. So I'd have to take 5 away from 9, which gives me 4. So what I've actually done is I have I've, I've created a special column, which is now, is now telling me that C equals 4, A plus B equals 5, and 2A equals 4. Now you can see these a, b, and c are sitting down here, and this is the key then to finding the rest of my nth term. I know that c equals four, okay, so that's done, all right? I know that this is four. Um, I also know that two a, these are the two easiest ones, two a equals four, so therefore a must be equal to two, so I've got that one as well. And then the magic continues when I see that I've got a plus b equals five in this middle equation. Okay, now I already know that a is 2, so I can substitute 2 in. 2 plus b equals 5. And so what I get is b equals 3. There we go. So there we go. We've done it. I mean, I just think it is the easiest method. I've looked at lots of different ways, and I really think it just gets you there. If you know, if you can remember c, a plus b, 2a, and how to make the special column, it's sorted. You don't need to worry about anything else. You're always going to come to the answer if you're careful. So it's 3n plus 4, 2n squared plus 3n plus 4. We could always, of course, put in 1. Okay, so 1, 2 times 1 squared is 2 plus 3 plus 4. That gives us the first term of 9. We can check it by putting 2 in. So that would be 2 squared, 4 times 2 is 8. Plus 6 is 14, plus 4 is 18. You can check it and it works. Okay. All right, so that's the special column method. I'm going to go through it one more time and maybe, you know, have a go with me. So... Second one, um, so number two, let's have a go at this one. Here's our quadratic sequence that we need to find the nth term for. So 1, 7, 17, 31, 49. 
Okay, this time, let's look at the first row of differences. I can see straight away it's not constant. So I've got 6, I've got 10, I've got 14, I've got 18. And so the difference between the differences, again, actually is 4. Okay. Right, special column time. And I'm going to label my special column. So I've got C, A plus B, 2A. This is the special column. Let's go backwards. 4, 4, 4, 4. Easiest way, I think, because we do these subtractions, don't we? It's 10 minus 4 is 6. 6 minus 4 gives us 2. 49 minus 18 is 31. 31 minus 14 is 17. 17 minus 10 is 7. 7 takes 6. So the next difference before 6 is 2. So what's 2 less than 1 is negative 1. Okay. Straight away, I'm getting closer to working out what the values of the ABC are in my mystery quadratic nth term. I can see here that C is equal to negative 1. Solve that one already. That's negative 1. Uh, 2A, again, is equal to 4. So therefore, A equals 2. All right, so I've got that one as well. And it's just this one, really, that is a little bit more work, I suppose. Not really. Put 2 in. Uh, 2 plus B equals 2. Well, B comes out, therefore, as 0, doesn't it? So that's 0. Now, 0N is just nothing. So, I mean, I could write it in two ways. I could write it as 2N squared plus 0N minus 1. Or I could just say that it's 2N squared minus 1. I don't really need to put that zero in. Yeah, okay, great. Let's go and do one more, just for, just for good luck. And this time, it's a little bit different. I'll have got a negative, one involving negatives, okay? Uh, so we've got negative three this time. So that's negative three. Then I've got negative 13. Then I've got negative 31. Then I've got negative 57. And then I've got negative 91. And the differences, right, so let's go for it. A little bit trickier now. So I've got minus 10, I've got minus 18, I've got minus 26, and I've got minus 34. And then my second row of differences, I've got negative 8. Yeah. Oh, what's happened there? So negative 8, negative 8. So I just need to put in a special column. Special column method always works. It's my favorite. C a plus B, 2A. Okay, so they just go in and just follow it backwards. Well, the second row of differences is always the same. So the one before that would have been negative 8. Just got to be careful, really careful, because it's negatives now. So, um, so if I was taking away a... The easiest thing to do is if we think minus 18, subtract negative 8, it's like add 8, isn't it? So what's 8 more than... Uh, so if I'm subtracting negative 8 here, it, what's 8 more than minus 10? It would have been minus 2, wouldn't it? So minus 2, let's think about it. Take away 8, yes, would give me minus 10. And then in this one, it's minus 3, subtract negative 2. Okay, just like here, it would have been minus 13, subtract negative 10. I'll add 10 is minus 3. Minus 3, subtract negative 2 is minus 1. So definitely a little bit trickier. But if you can be careful, you'll get it. Um, okay, let's fill it in then. So I've got an squared plus bn plus c. Uh, and I've just got to go and find those values now. So c is negative 1. a plus b is negative 2. 2a is negative 8. Straight away, I've got one of them. That's negative 1. Uh, this one is telling me that a is negative 4. And I've just got to then substitute negative 4 into here to find what um, b is. So let's go and do a bit more work. So minus 4 plus b equals negative 2. That means that b must be negative 2 plus 4, which is equal to 2. So there we go. So that's 2. Okay, so I've got all my numbers. Oops, sorry. And I just need to put them in there. So I get an answer of nth term is minus 4n squared plus 2n minus 1. And that is my nth term. I hope you like that method. I love it. I think it's so clever. And I really hope that that's helped with your work. If you're enjoying my videos, if you really enjoyed that one, leave me a comment, uh, like, and subscribe. Okay, I hope to see you again on some more videos.